and those who cause violence in its name are criminals and thugs, including the KKK, neo-Nazis, white supremacists, and other hate groups that are repugnant to everything we hold dear as Americans. So with the civil rights investigation now underway, will the president's comments today quiet his critics over the remarks that he made on Saturday where he didn't call out the groups specifically, or at least not all of them. Joining me now, Fox News contributor Deneen Borelli, GOP communication strategist Adam Goodman, who is also principal of the Victory Group, and Pastor Daryl Scott, who serves as CEO on the National Diversity Coalition for Trump. Pastor, I begin with you. Did Donald Trump strike the right chord today? Is this what the nation finally needed to hear? Absolutely. I mean, he spoke in general terms on Saturday. He spoke in more specific terms on today. He went down the line. He uh, highlighted, delineated each group that he thought was participating in that horrendous activity from the other day. And I think he hit a home run. Now, his critics aren't going to appreciate it, no matter what he's... If he'd have called out everybody individually by name, they still wouldn't have liked it. <laughs> <laughs> so, Deneen, I ask you, is this too little, too late? We're looking at the, the protesters. There's always going to be protesters when the president's moving, especially coming back to his hometown, um, a democratic city. But, you know, is this message, what he said today, it resonated, but was it too little, too late? Listen, I think the message he gave over the weekend was the right message. He condemned all hate, all violence, all racism. Sadly, you have those individuals who are going to be critical of him no matter what he says or what he does. And you would think following these tragic events, the aftermath, we had three people that lost their lives. You had, what, 19 people who were injured. You would think folks would be trying to come together, to rally the country together. But unfortunately, you have individuals like Maxine Waters who was tweeting, uh, this is now the white supremacist house instead that. of the White House. Yeah. And she's supposed to be a leader. She's right. the part of the problem. The white supremacist house. It's outrageous. Of the White House. And she said with leaders like, you know, Steve Bannon in there, yes. that's what it's become. Um, you know, it's interesting, Adam. Um, you know a thing or two about communication. <laughs> Does the White House need a, a communication director right now? And I say that because if Trump had said what he said this afternoon, if he said that on Saturday, do you think we would have been in a different situation now? Well, you know, they, they've tried several times to get the communications part right, because I, I think it's not about having the wrong message. It's just it's not being, uh, being delivered effectively, compellingly, and consistently. Uh, in terms of what you do with an issue like this, uh, what makes the President of the United States and actually any executive position in politics different than a legislative position is in times like this, you, you almost want to hear from a parent uh, with the parent saying, it's going to be okay. And I think, you know, the president uh, really got his footing today. Mm -hmm. I, I wish he had been a little bit clearer the day before. Uh, but I think what we really have to understand here is that we live in a society that has been segregated into warring factions where everyone seems to be out to score a point at the expense of another. And the biggest thing that should come out of this weekend is a rally, a rally across America to pull together. Because we fail to do that and build a wall of the willing Mm -hmm. The silence in face of things like this will be deafening. All right, President tweeting right now, this is what he says, made additional remarks on Charlottesville and realized once again that the fake news media will never be satisfied. Truly bad people, 